Sometimes even worse than the things that were done to you in childhood are the harmful things that even in adulthood you're still doing to yourself that make healing more difficult. Now some of these are pretty minor and some of them might be major and it could be a question of degrees. I call them self-defeating behaviors and they always start as an innocent way of getting out of pain. I'm Anna Runkle, also known as the crappy childhood fairy, and I teach people how to heal from the effects of childhood PTSD, how to make changes in your life step by step from brain healing to emotional healing to healing the ability to connect with other people. And then on the way to the really advanced levels is this, identifying and changing your self-defeating behaviors. Because here's the thing, this healing doesn't tend to happen all by itself when you don't even try. Now, it's not your fault that you were hurt like this, but now every bit of your courage is going to be needed because there are things to be faced and things only you can change. Do you know what I'm saying? The horrible irony of surviving abuse and neglect in childhood is that the more you were hurt back then, the more likely you are to adopt these self-defeating behaviors that make the effects of the original trauma even worse. These are things like the people you allow into your life, the way you take care of yourself, the choices you make about partners, jobs, money, where you live, the people you admire and listen to, the things you say, and of course, the way you act. Now, we all know how a rough childhood can increase the chances of really bad outcomes. I'm sure you know people who were hit even harder than you, people who are sick, addicted, isolated, involved in violence or worse. Now, when the healing never gets to begin, there's always a danger of that negative progression down, but that doesn't have to be you. You can turn that around into a positive progression and make the trauma stop. Now, maybe you're at that point. Maybe you're not there yet. There just isn't time in any single video for me to cover everything that I teach in my courses and coaching, but I want to give you here some encouragement and hope by just describing the signs, what it looks like, what it feels like when you're not re-traumatizing yourself anymore, okay? And I teach this because for me, this was the hardest part of healing. I mean, yeah, the stuff that happened to me when I was a kid was bad, but in the end, it was the stuff I did to myself, the bad relationships, the chain smoking, the lashing out at people I cared about, all of that stuff. If you've taken my courses, you've heard my story, but I wasn't getting better for a long time because of all the hurtful situations that I kept putting myself in and sometimes dragging other people into. But then I changed. It didn't happen all at once. And I'm very far from being perfect today. I'm a work in progress just like anyone else. But if you're stuck in the pattern that I used to be in of just continually, involuntarily re-traumatizing yourself and not able to move forward, I just want you to know, I get it. I understand and I'm here to show you a better way. Okay, so you wanna hear some of the signs when you're healed from re-traumatizing yourself all the time? And remember, you're not gonna have all of these, but you can see if you relate to some of them. All right, one is you no longer tend to see everything in black and white terms. People, yourself, situations, you don't anymore hold them up as all good or put them down as all bad, right? You begin to appreciate the complexity of things and the way people can have faults, but also be good people. And you'll have less outrage. That would be good. You'll have more curiosity. Also good. You'll have less impatience and more persistence. You'll lose the attraction to extreme views or authority figures who are really damning of other people. And you'll gain the ability to just interact with all kinds of people. Now, relationships where one person dominates the other, it might be you, it might be them, those are going to become more equal or they're going to just totally fade out of your life. It's going to be less necessary to cut people out too because the ones who don't fit you aren't going to get in in the first place. So number two is you'll have a natural desire to care for your body. And part of this is because you'll have less drama and more energy to do things like exercise or floss your teeth or shop for clothes that actually look good on you and you'll feel better. So that now when you end up staying up till 1 a.m. watching Netflix, it's just not gonna feel worth it. And you'll have more strength to make a different decision the next night. It's gonna become more possible to face addictions and to take action to overcome them. You, you know what you need to do is doing it, right? And when you're able to take at least small steps in the right direction, you start to get more clarity and more enthusiasm for your life. And then you want to do more good things. That's how it happens. So number three is 
And this is another one where an old behavior will start to feel just ugh. And that's around the way you eat. And being at the effect of past trauma can lead to everything from obesity and eating disorders to a tendency to deal with stress by binging on carbs and sugar. And these foods can be calming at first, but take it from me, they end up being just yucky and dysregulating in the long run. And so as you heal, you're not gonna want that feeling. And in fact, if sugar and carbs are your weak spot, like they are mine, I've included the quiz that I've been mentioning, the carb sensitivity quiz that I found that really helped me change my eating. I've put that down in the link and you can find out if you're carb sensitive too. You can find that later. All right, number four, you're gonna lose the compulsive desire to binge on TV and video games and just looking at your phone all the time. Like a lot of us have that problem, right? If you're someone who's been into it long enough that it interferes with sleep, meals, uh, job performance, or your ability to be present with people in your life, then you know you could probably f legitimately call it an addiction and getting free from that is going to be life-changing for you. And I know I have to like look into a screen to say this to you and you have to watch a screen to hear it. So it's not always possible to eliminate it entirely, but everything in moderation, right? All right, the fifth sign that you're not re-traumatizing yourself anymore is that you won't be tempted to fudge the truth. Things like exaggerating, hiding important information about yourself, or even lying about things. Now, part of the reason is there's gonna be nothing you need to hide or feel ashamed about when your life is cleared up a bit. You're not gonna have so many problems. So you'd be comfortable being more honest about what's really going on. But it's also because just being real, being honestly yourself feels better. And you'll start to have like an uncomfortable feeling when you're not being real. You'll, you'll want the truth to filter through your life. And if there's anyone in your life who still can't handle who you really are and how you really feel, it's gonna be okay. Maybe they're not meant to be there. Maybe when they're gone, even though saying goodbye will be sad, there's gonna be this big, nice space where people who totally get you and are okay with who you are can come in and be your friends instead, okay? The sixth sign, oh, that's hard to say. All right, sign number six is that your work life will start to go better and you won't stay stuck in unfulfilling work. You're gonna change your relationship to that job or get the new one. And if a lack of work has been more the problem, all the good changes happening are gonna make it easier to get work and earn money that supports you and the people who count on you. You're gonna know how to steer clear of crap jobs and exploitative or abusive bosses. And you'll lose your appetite for conflicts on the job. You know, the complaints, lawsuits, all that stuff and just do good work and get along with people and be an encourager of your coworkers, as well as an advocate for yourself and your ideas when you need to, right? The seventh sign that you're done re-traumatizing yourself is that you'll lose interest in assigning blame to anybody, to yourself or other people for problems and focus instead on finding good solutions. That's where all the power is. You're gonna feel less angry, less irritable. And when something is your fault, it'll be easier to just own it and apologize. And when somebody owes you an apology, but they don't give it to you, eh, you know, you're not going to dwell on it. Blamey, complainy news and social media posts will start to put a really bad taste in your mouth. You're not going to want to read them. You're not going to want to write them. And the people in your life, they may not know why right away, but they're going to feel better about themselves when they're around you because you're safer. The eighth sign is that an attraction that you used to feel to unavailable partners and troubled people it's gonna let go of you. Now I talk a lot about that in my courses about healing relationships, but so much life damage is done by this one self-defeating behavior where you connect and bond and stay with people who are trouble or you avoid any kind of intimacy with people at all, even though it's what you long for or you abuse intimacy by acting out sexually, which is still a way of having no intimacy, right? Now this is one part of CPTSD that can be hard to heal just by like deciding to do it because it runs so deep, it cuts to the, the heart of the trauma wound. But when you've made real progress in other areas, it's gonna be easier to stop re-traumatizing yourself in this one. The spell is broken and there's peace when you're single. You're not afraid of it. And the possibility of harmony shows up and real love when you do meet someone. Mm. The ninth sign is that you start to prefer just reality to fantasy. The tendency to check out by spending too much time in a fantasy romance or 
a fantasy business, you know, rich and famous in the future. That kind of thing, it's really common when a person is in the middle of trauma, when they're really going through it, they just want to kind of take a little mental vacation there. But ultimately, it's just a way to avoid real problems that need you here to take action. So when you're healing, fantasy feels less necessary. And when you catch yourself daydreaming, you can come back right into the land where you can actually connect with people and put your goals into action, which is right here, right now. Now, finally, number 10 is that your material well-being starts to come together in a really good way. Now, most people in the world, including most happy people, live good lives without having a lot of money. Very few people have a lot of money. Financial hardship, too, can fall on pretty much anyone sometimes. But when you're free of trauma, it's more possible to earn a steady income, to let go of things like get-rich-quick schemes, and to live within your means, not get into debt. You can release the fear of the past, maybe from when you were a kid, maybe from more recently, when maybe homelessness was always a few hundred dollars away, right? It all gets better. It gets better in little pieces, and then it starts getting better all at the same time. A little here, a little there. You can sleep at night. You can handle a hard day. You can hold your head up, even though you made a mistake, because you're not sabotaging yourself anymore in ways that make you feel fundamentally ashamed. This is what healing feels like when you're not re-traumatized all the time. So don't get discouraged. There are things you can do to start your healing right now. And I put a lot of them in links down in the description section below. I always do that. And in fact, I'm gonna point you to a video right here that asks some very strong questions that could help show you some first steps you can take to start feeling better today. <music>